so there is another cut in our institute that the PhD student already before submitting the thesis is supposed to be followed. And this is the case we have today. So Jan Bogarski uh, almost ready, I think, to submit his GSD thesis. But before that, to tell us what this thesis is about. So uh, Jan, the screen and the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, thank you for coming, and I'm grateful for this opportunity to share what I've been working on uh, last year with much. Um, so this was, uh, I, I was working intensively with Leon Locker for the last year, and this became the main topic of my PhD. Uh, also, this one Karet was, was uh, helping us, and uh, most of the results that I'm going to speak about today can be found on the uh, archive already. And as announced, this is a, a PhD presentation, and I'm uh, doing my PhD under the supervision of Professor Maria Kush. Um, I will begin. Um, well, I don't have a lot of time, and there is a lot I want to share. Thanks, I need our controversial. I will be grateful if you uh, keep the um, deep uh, question for the lecture and only ask very secretary questions as we go. Uh, I will start with my motivation. So um, I think that quantum field theory is not fully satisfactory as a fundamental framework for physics. And uh, I think this the, the first point is that it, there is no rigorous non perturbative formalization of this as a, as a formal framework. Um, and also, in my view, operationality, I will say in a minute what I mean by operationality is being compromised in quantum field theory. And also, it seems that uh, it, it doesn't seem to be compatible with, uh, with, with including gravity in the picture in, in a rigorous way. So, the first point I think is a fact as far as I understand these things. And uh, the next two are my opinions. You're welcome to disagree. But this is my motivation. So I think we should maybe try to do better somehow. So the goals of the framework that I'm going to present, uh, it's been developed since about 10 years by, by Leon, whom I joined uh, recently. Uh, and so it's under development. It's not finished, but some results are already, I would say, promising. Uh, the, the full goal of, of this framework is to have a, a fully operational, uh, completely rigorous, and non perturbative approach to relativistic quantum physics. That's the big goal, but I think we should have dreams. Uh, and then maybe also some new research directions towards reconciling gravity uh, will emerge from this sort of understanding that I'm going to uh, now present. So here's a plan for today. First, uh, I will speak a little bit about what I mean by operationality. Then I will introduce the basic notions of the framework, the reference systems, and also the principle of invariance of variables. Uh, then moving forward, I, I will say how, how we define a, a relational and relative descriptions of physical systems. So this will become clear in a minute. And then introduce the notion of localizability. So time frames have um, some sort of classicality uh, features, and using them, we can, from our relational, if you could say, framework, we can recover the standard formulation of quantum mechanics that's not relational. Uh, so, this is an important point. And then mm, there is the notion of a frame chain. So, if we are describing systems relative to other systems, uh, we should be able to translate these descriptions. Uh, to the one where we have chosen another reference as, as a, for the description. So such a map has been developed, and it's the main topic of this paper that I uh, that I did this late. And then if we still have some time, which may not happen, I will uh, briefly uh, say about other perspectives, that what kind of conjectures they want to prove, and where, where this is going. Okay. So what what operationality? So I think that the physical theory should uh, first of all describe aspects of the physical world that can be classified by means of experiments, at least in principle. This is maybe obvious, 
but most are theories don't satisfy this. So, you know, let me continue. Mm -hmm. Therefore, uh, physical theory should be concerned with assigning probabilities to propositions that we can classify. Uh, so, I would like to call a framework operational if its subject is limited to that probability assigned. What does it mean? We should not be introducing things like any objects in the framework that are not aligned with the purpose, purpose of assigning probabilities to propositions. So this is this becomes like from the obvious point. Um, this becomes somehow a radical stance. So I can rephrase it. Uh, so operational framework should be primarily concerned with probability distributions and refrain from introducing notions that are not aligned to this purpose. So we should try to get rid uh, of anything that's not about probability distributions. And that's the starting point. And okay, now it's going to be a little bit mathematics. So the natural natural uh, universe for speaking about operationality is the world of general probability probabilistic theories, uh, where the setup is like uh, the state spaces are, are fundamental, and they are modeled as convex subsets of, of three vector spaces. That's a very minimal assumption. And uh, I think uh, there are there are good reasons to put a more restrictive definition of a state space in the GPT. So I would like to uh, say that state spaces should be not only convex but proper convex. And what does that mean? So if we have a convex set, we have a fine functionals on this set. So the function is that assign real numbers to space respecting the convex structure. And we can, well, they can be bounded if the numbers are uh, not, not infinite. And they can also be uh, effects. So it means that for any member of the state space, the given number is zero and one. So that's a very general definition, of course, in quantum theory that, that we will see in a minute. This boils down to the usual uh, definition of an effect. And then uh, the state space is total complex if, by evaluating effects on states, I can distinguish the states. So if I have two states and they give the same numbers uh, when evaluated on uh, all the effects, then they are going to be the same because they're not indistinguishable. Does that make, make sense? Or it, okay. So um, that, that's a reasonable, I think, uh, assumption. And then the observables should assign probability distributions to states. So as in the state space, so I have a map F is uh, the sigma algebra of subsets of sigma. Sigma is a measurable space. So this is like a very general way of putting, of stating what was on the previous slide for a mathematically oriented people. So of course, quantum mechanics, yes. So maybe we were going to say that, but do you have examples of total sets? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So quantum mechanics satisfy this. So I have a problem of question. Yeah. So uh, like using GPTs to define effects as the, the most functional to satisfy that their evaluations are in the right amount. Yeah, yeah, like what I think. Okay, can you give some physical observation for considering the total uh, convex sub subsets? Well, I, think I, I think I did, but I'll just do it again. So the understanding is that effects assign, well, they, they represent somehow questions that they will generate or to the system. And then they give, evaluated on state, they give pro probabilities of this uh, proposition being true. And then I want to um, only distinguish the states and that, that can be distinguished by asking this question. So if I have two states that give the same probability distribution, as we mean that total is that those are fine. So by total, it's the total complex subsets mean that those are fine functional but distinguish. Yeah, I mean, okay. that, that's the so, condition. Okay, fine. So there's one to one correspondence between the number one and the other. There's just one effect and the proposition now is one to one mm -hmm. correspondence. Like you, you yes. So, in fact, in if this uh, set is total convex, you can embed, uh, embed it in like Banach convex theory, like order unicorn space. So, it seems natural, but it's actually quite strong. 
and that, that's why I like it. But please let's move because I, I won't get to, to my point. So, quantum mechanics satisfies this requirement. So, with state of density operators and FX as usual, and then um, uh, observables are given by the OEMs. Uh, but uh, we may encounter, encounter a situation where uh, even though our state space uh, is, is given, we don't have access somehow, either for some practical reasons or for principal reasons, which we cannot evaluate all the effects that are applying in bounded to our function on our state space. So this, um, if, if I have a subset of the effects that are available to me, uh, but it's not the whole space of the effects, then this the, the state space is not no longer total convex with respect to this restricted set. But this remark about the Hilbert space, do you assume from the very beginning that you work on this example or this was on the side remark? Yes. No, so the framework I'm going to present is only developed in the Hilbert space uh -huh. setting. But there is no a priori no physical reason. So. No, and that's in one of the uh, directions. I uh, would like to branch of mathematics, which uh, was very popular when I was young, whose name was uh, quantum logics. And yeah. the main question was whether uh, all these beautiful, physically well motivated uh, functions. Uh, can be realized outside of the Hilbert space framework. Yeah, sure. So and as far as I know, the, this there was never this question was never asked. That's right. I understand. Yes. So one, one of the, the, the research directions that I want to push further is try to generalize all that I will hopefully present soon to the general setting of convex uh, state, yeah, state spaces. So you assume that you work in the so in the introduction now I was just talking about what I think operationality means. So quantum mechanics is operational in this sense, but we may encounter a situation where it doesn't satisfy this requirement simply because not all the effects are uh, available in some sense. But then what we can do we can define an equivalent relation on the set of space by identifying those that are not distinguishable. Uh, by the available effects, so when f is in this restricted set, and it turns out that well, you can question the state space, and it is total convex with respect to the uh, restricted the restricted set of effects, and we can do it, uh, of course, also in quantum mechanics, and it, uh, surprisingly, perhaps, all the Banach structure is preserved under such an operation, and we have this sort of divide. So maybe I will slow down a little bit. So this is the quotient state space that has states in a quotient by the equivalent relation defined by the available effects. And this is a subset of the space of trace operators, also quotient, and this, this turns out to be also still a Banach space. Uh, and we have a Banach duality. So this is the trivial space to this space. And this is the um, vector space spanned by these effects and the um, ultra weakly close. So, this is a closure, 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 set closure in the ultra weak topology. The point is that uh, we, uh, by, um, we can keep operationality even in this restricted setup and also. Uh, we don't have to sacrifice this duality between states and effects. So this generalizes this uh, usual duality between trace of all trace of the operators and, and all bounded operators into the setup where we have restricted access, access to, to the effects. But what is the nature of choice of this set all of uh, available effects? Very good question. So that's my point. Uh, yeah, we will try to come to that. So, um, what is what is well? I, I'm just gonna introduce the concept. So, well, this thing that we, we're doing it fits into the general in maybe a research direction of quantum reference frames. 
And the main idea, uh, as far as I understand it at least, is that um, coordinate systems that we use in physics, uh, well, should be treated as abstractions of actual physical systems that are used in life to make observations. And I, I think this is very close to, um, to the way Einstein thought about them as this physical like rocks and blocks with respect to which we define quantities that then become meaningful and are not meaningful otherwise before you say what's the reference. But how we use them, we, we abstract them, we may make them ideal, like infinite lines, interaction, clocks, that can matter, all times. And we don't treat them as physical systems, we treat them as mathematical entities that allow us to describe other systems with respect to the chosen reference. And the intention is to not make this step, this other evaluating step, to just treat them as physical systems. And then maybe before introducing a language in which they they are described these systems, um, we can think about what kind of features such uh, frames uh, should have. So I think that we should be able to uh, orient them uh, or re reorient them. So we should be able to speak about orientations of frames. So we can we can move it somewhere, and then our description will change. We can. Uh, rotated, we can boost it perhaps if we have like one very asymmetry structure, something like this. Uh, so, this is um, a feature that the frame should have. Uh, and if we want to be operational, then it should be given one by an observable orientation of a frame. Mm, okay. Then, uh, so this, this bolded things I see as like principles we should follow. Maybe. Um, so another principle is uh, realization very much in line with the intuition um, that whenever we are measuring something, we need uh, an apparatus, especially in quantum physics. Right? We, we always describe, uh, so well, one, one could even say that in quantum physics, as it is presented usually, it's a theory about how quantum systems interact with classical systems that are macroscopic apparatuses. But in any case, uh, also in classical physics, we need to, to have some sort of equipment to well, access degrees of freedom, something like this. And so, well, the, um, the statement I, I want to put forward is that we should actually always be describing pairs of systems in some sense. Perhaps like a tensor product, composite systems, maybe not necessarily, but uh, we should be able to specify what the, what is the reference system, and it should be equipped with this of, uh, orientation observable. And then on top of it, uh, for now, we put uh, universality of quantum mechanics assumption. So all our systems will be described by quantum mechanics for now. Okay, so this is uh, a test like BABS, perhaps. Uh, and how are they implemented? Well, so we, we take a group, we can think about one third group if you want to do relativistic physics, and it can be any like local compact compatible outer group, so it's very general. And then the quantum reference frame is a triple, so we have a hyperspace that's assigned to the system in quantum mechanics. Then we have a group action, so a map that takes group elements to unit pairs, and uh, uh, Covariant EOVM, so this is the orientation observable. Uh, it's a map. So these are our groups are um, topological groups. So I take Borel subsets as my sigma algebram, and I have a EOVM that maps uh, subsets to effects on the frame. So that's the EOVM. And this covariance condition means that I can speak about uh, rotations, so acting on, on the frame. Uh, on the, on the level of this uh, group that's underlined my POVM, so I can translate my subsets, but I can also do it on the level of, uh, of the quantum system. So I have this representation, and it's somehow co um, the POVM is compatible with all this action. You could say it's an equivariant variant map if you really want. So that's like the compatibility precondition. And we, uh, well, we just state this as a definition of the quantum reference frame. 
actually it can be made more general so we can have just a um, space on which G acts transitively uh, but for the purpose of this uh, there's no, no need for making this more general uh, because there are questions that we are answering now and they're not fully answered yet so this is a uh, working definition general enough then a quantum reference frame is a quantum system with a covariant permutation curve. That's the message. Um, and in special relativity, all frames, uh, which are these idealized coordinate systems, uh, actually on, on the quantum space, they are all identical. That's just a fact. So you can translate between them by quantum uh, group elements. But here we have. Uh, Mm, so, so there is there, there is no difference between uh, changing a frame and reorienting your frame. This is the same thing conceptually and mathematically. So, so but, I, yes, so you said that in the special relativity all frames are identical, but uh, the way you define this quantum reference frame is that you have a quantum system. So yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that was terrible. Then there might be many observable. Exactly. Separate, That's exactly what, what, I want, what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. So it's a pattern form of the truth. This is just a, a note that in, in the uh, relativistic uh, physics, we, we the two notions of orienting a frame and changing a frame, they coincide. But with such a general definition, they don't. And we're going to see transformations between frames or that are not oriented, reoriented frames. Do you mean outside from? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's not very precise. Yeah. But this okay. is just on the conceptual level, maybe that there are notions that seem to diverge in this setup. All right. And how much time do you have? Okay. So the last, uh, you could say, principle we put in order to uh, convert to an actual framework. Is that so? R is always a reference, S is always a system. So, uh, well, I, I announced that we're going to be describing virtual systems. So, we have a composite system of the frame and the system. And I assume there's going to be a connection of the same fixed group on both systems. What does that mean? Well, if I um, if I have my frame and I have a system that I'm describing, let's say I'm measuring uh, position of, of this thing with respect to this thing, and uh, I have the shift action of, of, the, of, 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 the, of the of the real line, then I can translate them together and the, the relative position should stay the same. So the, the principle corresponding is that the effects that I will consider on such pairs of systems will be invariant. So this G upward here, it means invariance. And I introduced this notation. So normally we, we act with unitaries like this on the effect and with the dual action on the state. But there is going to happen a lot. So I just have the short term notation. So an effect is on the composite system is invariant if it's being left unchanged by the group action. So, uh, well, so that's the first instance of restricting the space of methods to something that is in our principle. So we say, uh, we shouldn't distinguish the state on the composite system uh, if they cannot be distinguished by this invariant operator because the, the rest are not physical. And so we define this uh, operational state space and this portion. Then it is a total complex set because we have a general theorem for this. And this can be called a physical state space in analogy to physical different space if you. And no other frameworks for one reference frames. Uh, there are physical differences used in the perspective neutral approach. So okay. this can be seen as our analog, uh, conceptual analog of this notion. And then we have the, this duality, uh, balanced duality. So the normal states on this, this is actually a phenomenon algebra, and normal states on this thing, they correspond to elements of this quotient space. Don't worry too much. This is a bit technical, but we're not going to really use it. It's an example. Let's, let's say a first example of this thing. But then, well, if we are given uh, uh, on, on R, on the reference, we have also chosen already our frame orientation variable. So we have a natural frame and a system. We would like to uh, restrict the set of effects on the composite 
also that, that we only evaluate the, the effects of the uh, frame orientation observable on, on the frame. Because this is the observable we've chosen for the frame. And yes, so one can define this kind of set. Uh, so these are effects that uh, you could say respect the choice of the frame orientation observable. So on the system side, we can have anything, but on this side, we can only have uh, an effect of the frame orientation observable. Mm. Yeah, but X can be, so V is continuous, so there is a lot of those things. And uh, yeah, so this is not more, well, this is perhaps less restrictive than one may think. And then we can combine it with the other principle. So we can say that we want effects to respect the choice of the frame orientation variable and also be invariant. I know it's quick now. Uh, so are there questions? Here or it makes sense. I, I combine these principles of like having a fixed orientation observable for the frame and also uh, assuming invariance of the effects. So now there is a fair question to ask if this is actually non empty, if there are such effects, because this thing does not seem to be invariant in any sense, especially that this guy is covariant. So it seems maybe questionable. Uh, well, I, I have a corresponding state space, of course, so I can question this. Um, yeah. Okay, so the question is, is this non empty? And the answer is yes. In fact, there is a map that assigns for any effect on the system an effect that is uh, well, framed, which means that respect this frame observable and invariant. And it's given by this integral. Uh, this is a non trivial step. So, this integral, the, an integral with respect to a positive operator value measure is not something that is generally defined or studied. So this convergence of these things has been um, proved independently. A general theory is to be developed, but this has been done by, by Leon some years ago. And you can see that uh, it satisfies these properties, the, the, the resulting effect. Uh, so well, clearly on the left side, we have only the frame uh, effects and the invariance is a single calculation, which is maybe worth seeing. So if I act, this is the diagonal action. Um, so if I act on the result of this integration, uh, because due to the covariance of the frame observable, I can take this h here, and then I just change variables, and uh, here it comes. So nothing really happens. What are those yields? The yield is the notation for this map. So it comes from Japan. Yes. So it's one of the first. Yen is the generalization of the dollar mark. <laughs> which is point to the one, one of the young collaborators is, is Japanese, that you come right there, and uh, they developed this construction together. Yes. And yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, it's worth noticing that if I plug in an effect on S that is already invariant, then this Yen map does nothing because nothing happens here and it integrates. The OVM and get one. So I have, I have this uh, isomorphism. So the invariant effects on the system, when you relativize them, you get the same thing you started with. So these things, they are independent of the choice of the external frame of reference. I'm going to use this argument. Okay. Uh, which is the question is the end subjective? I think yes, in, uh, in all the relevant cases. But I have only proven this for the finite group so far. But that, that's a big conjecture that uh, needs developing of the full theory of these integrals to be proven. But I think, yeah, I think that that's actually true. So by relativizing effects on the system, we can get into all the effects that satisfy these two principles: invariance and frame. All right. So. Um, before I, I define this, this relational, um, this is called a rela relational description. So I have state quotient with respect to this guy. So I don't know if this is exactly the same thing as I get by relativizing style because there is a theory missing. So I define relative description, which is which says that the available effects are those that are relativized with this construction on this on the previous slide. 
So I call them almost the same word because I believe they're the same. But well, um, in, in this case, uh, so that's the definition of course that quotient of the state space. But you can prove that if the image is O, it's actually an image of a unitary normal positive map with GMS, then we have uh, an isomorphism of state spaces. Uh, this one, the quotient one, and also an image of the previous map of this uh, yes yeah, construction. And why this is interesting? Because this thing, uh, so yen goes from the, the effect on the system to the effect on the composite. Uh, so the pressure goes the other way. So the image of this map can be seen as, as a subset of space of the system type. And this is how, uh, well, I, I call these elements of this uh, thing a relative state. And in all other approaches to unregulated to to relative states uh, are states of the system. And this is what we have. So we, we are aligned with this uh, under this understanding. Um, okay, that's a, a trick that can be portioned to the course, and we have this duality as before. So, this is already if I, yeah, this already is found taken care of because the end is linear and the expound is here and not the effects. So, we close the image of the end here. All right, um, maybe a question? Yes, so I can say this is quite difficult to project. Do you have an example? Um, yes. Uh, yes, we do. Um, I will need to use the formula again. Do the example later. Yeah, because yeah. it's going to take time to write it down. Yeah, it's a nice no, sorry. Yeah, I perhaps it should. Um, okay, let's move. But just maybe I, I will just go back. Even like, yeah, the okay. math theory is that you made to keep our laws than everybody else. Yeah, yeah. I can have a check. I agree. So, I uh, just Imagine you have two qubits. Okay, it's true. And the qubits are not maybe best example, but if we if we, if we take I think that even if we're not managed to play everything, we should have yeah. the it's, it's better to give an example. So okay, so let's say we have a final group. Okay. Uh, I can take a very simple frame. Uh, I, I can, that's given on this on the Hilbert space of the sequences. And so this it has a covariant orientation observable given by so for each group element I uh, provide a projection which is an effect given like this and I can uh, on this Hilbert space is simply this regular representation of a finite group with a unique up to unitary equivalence. Covariant PVM. Uh, and then um, what can we do? Um, so in this case, uh, this POVM is localizable, which is uh, going to be defined on the next slide, which means that it satisfies some, some nice properties. And in this case, we have um, a state. I, I have this E head because everything is finite. So I uh, I, this equivalent that, that that's here. Um, if I have such a pure state on the tensor product, so this is on S, this is on R. This is equivalent. It's an S based morphism, so uh, like those two spaces to take two copies of this L squared of R. Oh yeah, so I yeah. model I model uh, R and S okay. with this guy. Just for simplicity. Um, so this is a state on the tensor product. And so we can take a path of this guy with respect to this thing, the, the, the image of the end. Uh, and under this identification, they correspond to size into this graph. So if the frame is uh, nice, then all states are relative states. Uh, so this image of the residual of n is actually the whole space with the system. Let's keep it here for now. I will tell you what operationality means, or what the localizability means. Um, that did it help uh, at least a little bit, or not really? Yeah, uh, this is difficult. Mm -hmm. I have another map. 
the last one and a simple one, I think. So it's a restriction map. If I uh, have an effect on the tensor product and I fix the state of the reference, I can uh, restrict effect uh, on the composite system to the effect on it. So this how it works on simple tensors can be extended to the whole effect space. That's the restriction map, and the understanding is that upon applying this restriction, uh, I condition the description of the composite system upon the particular preparation of the frame. Right. Um, so this important class of frames is called localizable. And uh, a frame is localizable if I can, upon the value, I have pure states that can be arbitrarily that give rise to uh, probability distributions upon evaluation on the frame observable that are arbitrarily well localized. So mathematically speaking, I, I have a sequence of pure states. Uh, this one I have pure states. This is an, a, a corresponding measure. And I can approximate here at delta with this here. This means that I can uh, prepare my frame in such a state that it is very sharply localized. And it, it behaves like class classes in this kind of state. That's the understanding. So this frame on the on the board is uh, is localizable. Mm, oh, okay. So a fully map there's this is like I think like a physical physically well motivated condition, and this is equivalent to all the effects having norm one. So in particular, if the POVM is sharp, then it's always going to be localized, but it's a strictly weaker condition. So sharp frames are too nice to be really interesting, but localizable ones, they allow for a lot of things and, and uh, yeah, are, are more, more interesting. So if, if I have a PVM, then it's going to be sharp. And this is why, so here we don't even need to have this limiting sequence because this state is already localized sharply at the identity of the group. And this is the way to make this work uh, for convenient groups. Okay. For localizable frames, we have this equation. So if I take an effect on the system, I relativize it to something that I say is physical, and then I, then I condition this relative description upon the choice of the localizing sequence of, of the frame state, I can get back what I started with. So this is important, I think, because it well. If what we're doing is, uh, as I was arguing for, we are measuring relative observables relative to other systems, but we are using the classical frames somehow, it can maybe be understood that we are, we are conditioning this relative quantum fancy description upon a particular choice of the uh, frame state. And then there is no difference so we could as well just start to buy AFS and not ever go relational. So this is a sort of agreement. So uh, well, um, reality check if we're not trying to hide with these things. Localized double means localizing as position space or what? Localized double means restrict. Local what well, is being localized is the probability. That the theorem delta measure, I can get the, the measure that for that um, describes the probabilistically orientation of the frame can get arbitrarily well localized. I, I have other states of the frame, and then the frame is spread as you want, and I can choose a state, a pure state, so that says that the frame is going to be localized at any at, at a given point. All right. Um, okay, this is maybe I can skip. Um, so that, that's the point I, I, I mentioned. So these are the relative states. They are a subset of the states of the system. And if the frame is localizable, then this is a dense subset. And this guy, so this is the closure of the image of the relativization map. This is isomorphic to the D of HS. So doing relative descriptions. Uh, with respect to localizable frame upon restrict, restriction with the localizing sequence, 
gives you nothing more than you actually had when you just wanted to do usual long relational quantum mechanics. Okay, uh, what was the time? Right. Okay. I, I'm wondering uh, if I should maybe try to help you a bit. So this, uh, I'm now going to move to describe the frame change, which Bill which uses all these things uh, to talk about. But if we have 10 minutes, then maybe I can also uh, do something. Oh, no, I will say about frame changes, and then we can try to do it on this simple example. I think the simple example is crucial. I guess many people are low. Yes. Helpful. I'll switch for those posts. Okay, then maybe we can run the end construction for this simple case. Okay, so there's a capital G symbol. Yes. And then for each is group parameter, we'll consider that the project of G G Yes. Not of yes. Yes. I can the project. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. And then what is the line which is below? Here. Yeah. So this is a state uh, uh, on the uh, simple product state on the composite system, mm -hmm. but I don't um, consider all this state. I have to portion by the relevant equivalence relation, and this is denoted by this R here. Portion um, relation to what can be well, what effects can be measured or um, yeah. So this R it means by the, by R. Okay. yeah yeah exactly. Um, and this uh, R is like a phrase with the quantum mechanics would be like reducing the space. Mm -hmm. No, the trace is one of the separation just below you. I can not sure to do it. The trace is yeah, you have a uh, composite system. Yeah. Uh, and then you wrote the square bracket and yeah. the R. Okay. So what was the meaning of the separation? Was So that's a state of the tensor product. That's a, a, an equivalent class. Ah, this is a portion. Okay. Yeah. That's a notation of, for the equivalent yeah. class. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, let's do the end thing. So, mm -hmm. that's a definition, but in this case, it's, it's, it's quite simple because we, so let's say I have. What did you have to assume some subset? One of the first lines of the subset. Yeah, and, and now, now the subset is the image of the end of this relativization map. So, how does the end look like? I take a, an effect on the system and I associate it with, uh, well, now a, a sum. And now we have effects to be just two guys and I sum over G. And then on the system side, I rotate. The, the effect accordingly. It's a tensor product, not the. Yes. Yes. This X is product or is one This is a tensor product. No, no, G. 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 A left, left, left. Small polynomials and capital group. I stand over the group. Yeah, so in other words, condition on the state of this group, you use a matrix. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. And now we may say, okay, the frame is being prepared in the uh, localized identity state. Yeah. And what I do is I, to this screen, I apply the, the gamma map with this state. So I apply this state on this side. So what's going to happen? Uh, I will have a sum over G, and then here this guy, and we have that. But since our representation is very simple, this is the delta that we're going to give you by the guys. And maybe one general formula can be also handy to have. Um, and find or in the therapy. Uh, so, a general formula 
uh, if I have a state in the tensor product, a simple, simple tensor, and I want to know what the corresponding relative state, I need to apply the residual of this EM construction. And what I get is this thing. So what is happening? Um, let's say I, I have a state on the tensor product like this one. Uh, then the corresponding relative state is a weighted average of the state that I've taken rotated with respect to, to the probability distribution that we're going to work. And then if this guy is localized as identity state of the frame, then it's going to give me back what I started. So nothing happens if the frames are less, but they do not necessarily have to be that much. And this specific example, the tensor method DU, U omega ER would be nothing else than the like the sum over D, uh, D kind of D times <laughs> omega. Yeah, yes, yeah, but yeah. we don't want to do finite groups, we want to do continuous groups. So this is a measure that's given by this guy. But four loops, right? Three. Okay. Nice. And then we do the frame change and we're good. Um, so now the setup is such that we have a big silver space and we consider two internal frames. So we uh, decompose the silver space into H1 is going to be the first frame, and H2 the second frame, and the rest, which is the system. And then we specify a covariant DOVM for each uh, frame. So we have a pair of, pair of inertial frames. And then the, the relevant um, restricted effect spaces are the following. So we want four invariant effects on the whole thing. Uh, and we also want them to be trained to respect, to respect the choices of both frames. For example, what we can do, we can take effects of this form and relativize them to respect to the first frame. We're going to end up here. We denote uh, the corresponding state space mm, this way. So this is divided by the equivalent relation that means um, giving the same probability distribution uh, upon the valuation of this guy. And it's the same. So this is a state, the state, state of relative state with respect to the first frame of the rest. So H2 and the rest. And we need to quotient those relative states with respect to the framing relation on the second frame. The idea is that we need to take care of all these choices to make our frame change work. Um, yes. And then what happens is that when the first frame is localizable, we need it to be localizable, we can translate. Okay, this is, looks difficult, uh, but this is what it is. So we can translate. From this relative state with respect to the first frame, but also they need to give account the relative the observable, observable second frame to the same thing with one and two in place. Uh, and we can do so uh, if, um, well, it, it is a coherent thing. So we, if we actually start from uh, a state on the B system and we uh, we ask what are the relative states with respect to different frames, this map is going to translate. Uh, coherently. And moreover, uh, if the other frame is uh, also localizable, this map is invertible and composable in the setup, setup of three frames. So it has all the desired properties uh, and it can be written down as a formula. Uh, it is way more complicated than all the other things that have been done, but it's, I think, well, it is uh, rigorous which cannot be said, unfortunately, about any other construction of frame change in final reference frames outside such simple setups, like finite groups. Everything is the same for finite groups, pretty much. But when you want to do continuous and non-compact, especially, then this is the only thing that uh, that is well defined. And it agrees with, in the simple cases, it agrees. So B is uh, another map defined in another framework, and if it applies um, and also um, post-composed with, with the equivalent relation on the 
uh, on the on the on the frame like it's made and so the claim is that if the other frame change map is made operational then it agrees with our construction uh, okay some conclusion yeah so that's well yeah you have some concluding slides I have like uh, research directions, but I can maybe conclude first. Uh, so what what we've done um, is that we extended uh, a framework for dealing with uh, quantum measurement in the context of symmetries by um, sort of fitting it in to this quantum reference frame way of thinking and also providing uh, a relevant Notion of a frame change map. Um, I I know it's difficult. Um, probably if I understood it better, I'd be able to communicate it better. But it's been really a, a very intense year. So a year ago, I know just as much as you about these things. I think. Uh, mm, so it's actually going pretty fast. And what I find exciting in this is that, um, well, you you can. You, you can actually say this, you can prove theorems and not only uh, not only use your intuition to write down integrals that we know that don't converge. Uh, you can actually, yes, try to put this ideas to work. Um, yes, so the things that are on the table uh, now is that, so I didn't tell you what the principal frames so they So for us, they were always defined on G, but they can be defined in the portion space or the homogeneous space. So these are non-principal and they can also be incomplete, which means that so we have this action on the frame uh, effects, but we can have a subgroup that leaves uh, the uh, that leaves the effects of the frame observable invariant. And then this is a difficult question because we can have frames that are um, that cannot see uh, some subgroups. Come on, cannot. Uh, yes. Well, another thing is that we have three more minutes or uh, times. Okay. 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 So, yes, algebraic and convex generalizations. This was discussed a little bit. Take you to the one array and see what we can actually do. Big difference scenario. So, that's something I didn't, I didn't mention, but I feel this is a setup that allows you to uh, specify very concrete, concretely which. Observables are uh, um, allowed for each frame and transfer between them. So I think it's reasonable to, to hope that it can be applied to uh, properly model the beginner frame kind of scenario. This I skip, uh, this we discussed. So in the end, I think we should be able to produce models for scattering experiments that are relational in this way. Um, yeah, I hope so. Uh, we should be able to run a full comparison with this ancient perspective neutral framework, but this would uh, require pushing our framework to distributions and also making sense mathematically speaking of what they're doing. Um, well, maybe there is a possibility to, to have a non localizable frame change, so a frame change that does not assume this localizability thing. Uh, we can think about quantum resources, how they Interact with the frame change, maybe there are some invariants. And uh, finally, what's the relation of this thing with the like, algebraic, perhaps, on the field theory? Okay, thank you for your patience. Then, already the first question. Give, giving motivations uh, right at the very beginning, you've kind of criticized the present state of. Of quantum field theories. Yes. Uh, there is one quantum field theory which is fantastically precise, even though it is in some sense inconsistent because it contains between infinities and requires a normalization. That's QED. Yes. What, what sort of, of refinement or improvement over QED can you envision uh, using your approach? I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, so that's the yes. I, I, I mean, okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, maybe one point uh, is that in in all quantum field theories, we consider well, fields on a space space plane that is fixed. And in my understanding, and also uh, regarding the definition that I get to operationality, we should not uh, consider 
such a thing as uh, a manifold to be um, fundamental in our framework because we can never measure points mm -hmm. in um, So that's a conceptual address, but it's a thing. Yeah, uh, but but until you have your better the division of a lab sheet, then you have no chance of. I know, I know. Other questions? First, I away from that lab sheet. I think Nikolai was How about taking this group of well with this algorithm and here to quantum mechanics and a crystal lattice? In that case, and that would be recover as the results of it. But it's not just the levels you go by. Amazing question. I never thought about this. But it seems fully reasonable. So you can do, I mean, you, you can buy or not my motivations and my, my convictions, but in any case, this is a piece of mathematics that that, uh, that that works. So you can put any group you want. You can understand it as you want. And uh, yeah, but I would need to, well, that has something concrete for you. I need to understand your crystals better, perhaps. Let me help. Yeah, I have one some general question because there is some tradition of studying quantum reference frames. Also, groups, three groups are here, there, maybe. Okay. One of the names that appears there is Rob Second, right from yeah. GI, and they they said a lot like this something that you know like doing portion effectively of the uh, state places. Typically, they consider the weak groups, compact weak groups. So, if you can just comment convert what has been done before, because I think there was quite some activity on, on yeah. the information side. What is in your research? What, what is the new thing? Yeah. So the new thing is that we can deal with non-compact groups, which no one could deal with before. Um, and we have a clear connection to uh, like quantum measurement here. So the, the claims are operation, more of operation, if you could say, and less of income sense. Because so in, in this information theoretical framework, you, for example, you take a two-year, you invert inventor Young's your, that you make your state invariant, which you cannot do on non-compact groups, and it, it's also not really well motivated in terms of operation operationally yeah, motivated. We can recover this community procedure of this by saying that so we, in this case, if this omega state is invariant, if the, the state of the frame is invariant, this guy is going to be the sphere. The, the relative state is the sphere one. So in a way, we generalize these things. The, also, this CN map was, was being uh, developed to make precise uh, and well, to make rigorous uh, the other maps that we're using there. Thanks.